femur shaft fractures in children the femur is the largest bone in the body the pediatric femur can be divided anatomically into the proximal femur made up of the femoral head femoral neck greater and lesser trochanter the femoral shaft and the distal femur made up of the medial and lateral condyles the shaft is the most common site for pediatric femur fractures accounting for almost 75 percent of all femur fractures and two percent of all pediatric fractures the specific mechanism of injury is most often related to the age of the patient for infants and toddlers age less than four years falls and child abuse are among the leading causes of femoral shaft fracture intentional trauma remains an important cause of femoral shaft fractures for all young children and warrants a high index of suspicion in those without a plausible explanation for their injury especially if present in a patient before walking age for toddlers to school age children falls remain the leading cause in this age group even relatively low energy injuries such as a fall from a low height or fall while running may result in a femoral shaft fracture as children reach their teenage years motor vehicle collisions and sports related injuries account for the majority of femoral shaft fractures Patients with predisposing conditions, such as osteogenesis imperfecta, or other reasons for generalized osteopenia, such as cerebral palsy or other neuromuscular conditions, benign or malignant bone tumors are at higher risk for femoral shaft fractures. Most pediatric femoral shaft fractures can be diagnosed upon clinical presentation. The child will have localized tenderness and swelling over the affected femoral shaft. Obvious deformity, shortening, with or without crepitus on palpation are usually present. The skin needs to be carefully inspected for signs of an open fracture. The clinician should look for associated signs of a proximal femur fracture, such as pain in the hip joint and or a characteristic externally rotated leg position because femoral shaft fractures may have associated proximal femur fractures. Clinical evaluation of a fractured child must also identify other concomitant and life-threatening injuries when associated with high-energy trauma. As with all fractures, a careful neurovascular exam distal to the site of the fracture before and after splinting is necessary to ensure that the displaced fracture has not damaged nerves or arteries. Standard anterior posterior and lateral plane radiographs of the entire affected femur, from hip joint to knee joint, are necessary to identify the fracture and provide pertinent information for configuration, angulation, amount of displacement, presence of comminution, and extent of shortening. Because shaft fracture may be associated with femoral neck fracture, particularly in instances of high-energy trauma, a clear radiograph of the femoral neck is mandatory. Children under 2 years of age in whom child abuse is suspected should undergo a skeletal survey to be evaluated for other bony injuries. Treatment Open fracture may also significantly alter the treatment plan. In addition, severely injured trauma patients may undergo non-operative treatment until their hemodynamic status stabilizes. For children with an isolated femoral shaft fracture and no other serious injury, initial therapy consists of pain management and immobilization. Definitive care for fractures of the femoral shaft can vary significantly, from short splint immobilization to open operative treatment. In general, treatment largely depends upon the age of the patient. In neonates, soft cotton roll and a tongue depressor makes a nice splint of appropriate size and padding. The use of a pavlik harness has also been described in the treatment of femoral shaft fractures in children less than 4 months of age, and in selectively smaller infants up to 6 months of age. Femur fractures in this age group usually heal within a month without long-term complications. 
In larger infants and children less than 5 years of age are most commonly treated in a hip spica cast. Closed reduction under sedation is required for fractures with more than 10 degrees of angulation. Because children's bones grow quickly, the doctor may not need to manipulate the pieces back into perfect alignment in the cast. The bones will grow and heal back into a more normal shape. As the body lays down new bone, over time, there is an automatic correction or straightening during growth called remodeling. Fractures that are significantly shortened, greater than 2 cm. A few weeks of skin traction using weight accounts 10% of body weight should be entertained to reduce residual leg length discrepancy. Spica casting then applied until fracture healing. In most instances, children can be transitioned to a spica cast after three weeks of traction. A spica cast begins at the chest and extends all the way down the fractured leg. The cast may also extend down the uninjured leg or stop at the knee or hip. Children remain in the spica cast for a period ranging from four to eight weeks. In children six to 10 years of age, Closed reduction and flexible intramedullary rod fixation are the treatments of choice in stable fracture patterns and weighing less than 50 kilograms. A knee immobilizer or a posterior splint is commonly used for a few weeks to prevent movement and to keep the child comfortable. In most cases, time to union is typically 10 to 12 weeks. Removal of the nail can be performed at 6 months to 1 year. The use of submuscular bridge plating, a construct that prevents shortening, is more appropriate in highly comminuted and therefore unstable, and fracture patterns in children who weigh more than 50 kg. After age 11, the diameter of the femur will allow intramedullary fixation with a rigid locked rod, which is then the preferred treatment. In younger children, the traditional piriformis fossa starting point is associated with a small but significant rate of osteonecrosis of the femoral head. Consequently, a trochanteric starting point is used until skeletal maturity has been attained. Once skeletally mature, a piriformis fossa starting point is preferred for the adolescent population. External fixators are used in a polytrauma patient open fractures, associated vascular injuries requiring revascularization, and segmental or significantly comminuted fractures. Significant healing of femoral shaft fractures usually occurs by six weeks after treatment.